the Victorian mansion. A cross between a brightly painted dollhouse and a remnant of late 1800s America. A derivative of Victorian English architecture, and one capable of stopping you dead in your tracks. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Today, we are spending time in California, a place filled with an endless supply of Victorian gems. Characterized by ornate decorations, intricate details, and designed to suit the lifestyle of an upper-class family, is it any wonder that the wealthy families of the late 1800s would often build their homes in this elaborate style? So if you've got a few minutes to spare, you're welcome to join us on our tour of the most eye-popping, most colorful, and most well-maintained Victorian mansions in the land of milk and honey. As we make stops in each location, prepare to be amazed at the sheer beauty of these homes as well as the history behind them. So without further delay, here are the 17 most jaw-dropping Victorians in California. Number 1. The Maury Mansion. This gorgeous Queen Anne with a unique onion dome, was built in 1890 for shipbuilder David Maury and citrus farmer Sarah Maury for a mere $20,000. After changing ownership several times throughout the 20th century, the house was sold to new owners in 1985 and opened as the first bed and breakfast in Redlands. It underwent extensive restoration in the early 2000s, and last sold for $850,000 in 2014. No longer a bed and breakfast, today it is a private residence. It is also rumored that the ghost of Sarah Maury and some other boisterous characters still linger in the house. Number 2. The Victorian at Los Alamos. You can find this Queen Anne tucked away in the small town of Los Alamos, just an hour outside of Santa Barbara. Constructed in 1864 by a Russian immigrant family in the town of Nipomo, it was later moved in 1980 to its current location, then renovated into a bed and breakfast shortly after that. Otherwise known as, The Vic, today the mansion offers guests a truly unique experience with its luxury-themed suites, such as a French theme, an Egyptian, Roman, pirate, gypsy, as well as a 1950s theme. With its beautifully painted murals and a surprise at every turn, there's lots of fun to be had at this bed and breakfast. And if you happen to be visiting the Santa Barbara area anytime soon, we highly recommend a stay here. Number 3. The Sarah Mish House. This stick East Lake style Victorian was built in 1885 for dry goods merchant Fennis Mish and his wife Sarah Mish, an accomplished businesswoman for her times. The wealthy couple also moved in with their troop of 10 kids. The home was originally built a block and a half away but was moved, four years after its completion to its current location in the Haight-Asbury neighborhood of San Francisco. By 1928, the mansion was sold out of the family to developers who converted it into apartments. Today, it is no longer an apartment house, but home to the Westside Community Services, an organization providing behavioral health and human services. Number 4. The Governor's Mansion. Sacramento is filled to the brim with eye-popping Victorians. And what better way to represent them than with the California Governor's Mansion? Built in 1877 for hardware merchant Albert Gallatin, the estate was purchased by the Californian government in 1903 for a mere $32,500 to serve as a home for its future governors. The 30-room Second Empire Italianate home holds many antique furnishings left behind by the long line of former governors who lived there. Today, you are free to walk the perimeter and snap your pictures from the exterior. However, the mansion is closed for touring. In case you were wondering if Gavin Newsom actually lives there, well no, he has his own private residence in the suburb of Fair Oaks. Number 5. The Carson Mansion. This stately home in Old Town Eureka is considered the most grand Victorian home in America. With its complex combination of gables, turrets, cupolas, and pillars, it is also known as one of the premier examples of Queen Anne-style architecture in the United States, and is one of the most highly photographed Victorians. In actuality, it is a mixture of multiple Victorian styles including Eastlake, Italianate, Gothic, Queen Anne, and Stick. Completed in 1886 for lumber baron William Carson, the 18-room mansion remained in the Carson family until 1950, when it was sold to local community business leaders. Today, it serves as the headquarters to the Igamar Club, and touring the mansion requires a membership fee in the thousands, as it is a private club, and not open to the public. Number 6. The Pink Lady. Directly across from the Carson Mansion, is this majestic Queen Anne beauty that was built in 1889 by the same lumber magnate, William Carson as a wedding gift for his son Milton and his bride. After William Carson died in 1912, the couple moved across the street into the much roomier Carson Mansion. 
However, their pink mansion still remained in the Carson family until the 1920s when they sold it to two German sisters. By the 1940s, the home was seized by the US government as Nazi property, then turned into a boarding house, and went through a string of owners and commercial mixed uses after that. Today, the fully restored Pink Lady is a privately owned educational and cultural center offering guided tours, as well as a luxurious vacation home that you can stay at the cost of a five-star hotel. You can also rent the home as the perfect backdrop for your next special event. Number 7. The Bear Stokes House. This lavish Queen Anne with its most notable horseshoe entrance, was built for Dr. Fred Bangs in 1888. It was later sold to a wealthy businessman named Thomas Bear. Not much else is known about this home, except that it was designed by the same architects of the Pink Lady and the Carson Mansion in Eureka, and that it made an appearance in the 2016 film The Love Witch. Today, it is still a private residence. Number 8. The Gingerbread Mansion. Ferndale is one of those small, well-preserved Victorian-era towns, known for its quaint shops and colorful architecture. But even with its plethora of amazing Victorians, we must give the Gingerbread Mansion, with its charming turret balcony, the prize. Otherwise known as the Ring Mansion, this Queen Anne Carpenter Gothic Victorian, was constructed in 1895 for Dr. Hogan Ring. He later converted the home into a public hospital in 1920. Hence, you will find a less ornate, 50-foot addition in the back. After Dr. Ring's death in 1930, the 10,000 square foot building would go on to serve as a veteran's building, a rest home, rental apartments, and today a four-star bed and breakfast. Known as one of the most photographed bed and breakfasts in the United States, it features beautifully furnished Victorian suites, roomy common areas, and manicured English gardens throughout the property. Number 9. The Sherman Gilbert House. This stick East Lake Victorian was built for builder John Sherman in 1887. It was later sold to Augusta Gilbert in 1897, and remained in the Gilbert family until 1965. In 1971, it was moved from its original location in the Bankers Hill area to Heritage Park, a Victorian village in San Diego. This was done to escape the wrecking ball. Today, you can visit Heritage County Park to admire the Sherman Gilbert House and its other restored Victorian siblings. Sadly, this mansion is not open for viewing. However, two of the other buildings can be viewed from the inside. Number 10. Heilbronn House. Built in 1881, this downtown Sacramento mansion was initially the home of August Heilbronn, a German cattle rancher, merchant, and landowner. It was designed by the same architect who designed the California governor's mansion. The home only cost a mere $10,000 to build at the time, and over the years it has served as a restaurant, an art gallery, and even a bank. Today, it is one of the only historic structures standing in a sea of office buildings, and it serves as an office for the California Department of Parks and Recreation. Number 11. The Queen Anne Tower House. Built in 1893, for David S. Braho, this striking Queen Anne is one of the most photographed homes in a sea of over 4,000 Alameda Victorians. Also known as the Braho House, the mansion changed hands multiple times over the last century, and has always been a cherished home to each owner. The home's recent owners of 17 years did a spectacular job at restoring and truly beautifying the property at every angle. The mansion recently sold for the bargain price of $2.4 million in 2021, and still remains a private residence. Number 12. The Albert H. Beach House. Don't let the name fool you as this two-and-a-half-story Queen Anne home in Escondido, is nowhere near the beach. Completed in 1896 for Albert H. Beach and his wife Anna, it features a rounded wraparound porch, perfectly manicured gardens, and a matching Victorian gazebo. The home went through a long string of owners throughout the 20th century, and has always remained a private residence. It was recently restored to perfection by its most recent owners, and comes with a host of modern features. Today, the Albert H. Beach House is still a private residence, and is currently on the market for $2.3 million. Number 13. The Brit Scripps House. Built in 1887, this three-story Queen Anne Victorian was built for Eugene Britt, a prominent attorney and judge, and his wife Harriet. It cost him only a mere $3,000 to build. However, it was considered the most expensive home in San Diego at the time. Some interesting features are the two-story stained glass window, mini balconies, elegant brick chimneys, and a matching carriage house in the rear. Mr. and Mrs. Britt lived in the mansion only two years after moving in. And in 1889, they sold it to Edward Willis Scripps, a newspaper publisher. 
The property exchanged hands multiple times over the last century and has been used for various businesses such as a law office, a chiropractor's office, as well as a hotel. In 2005 after a thorough renovation, the mansion became a bed and breakfast known as the Brit Scripps Inn. When it sold in 2017 for $3.85 million, it became the Brit Scripps Manor, a stunning venue for weddings and other events. It most recently sold for $4 million in 2021, and is currently a private residence. Number 14. The Winchester Mystery House. This massive Queen Anne spread was the home and perpetual undertaking of Sarah Winchester, the widow of William Worth Winchester of the Winchester Rifle Fortune. What started out as an eight-room house, eventually grew to 160. If it seems extensive to you, would you believe that there used to be even more floors to this mansion? Sadly, the upper floors of this masterpiece were destroyed during the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which prompted Sarah to build out. Would you also believe that Sarah Winchester was her own architect, and designed this beautiful estate without any formal training? Now, as to why a lone widow would build such a colossal estate for herself. Well, this is where the many truths and untruths about Sarah come into play. We'll let you do the research, and decide what the truth is for yourself. In the meantime, you can visit the Winchester Mystery House for multiple guided tours, to stroll through the gardens, to attend a special event, or even host your own event. There's lots to see and do here. So in order to take it all in, be prepared to spend the entire day. Number 15. The Vedanta Society's Old Temple. This exquisite building is known as the first Hindu temple on the Western Hemisphere. Built between 1905 and 1908 by Swami Trigana Titananda, it's a Victorian that features a mixture of exotic styles including Eastern Bengal domes and towers, cusped Mughal arches, Moorish columns, and a European castle tower. The different styles represent different religions and cultures coming together under one roof. The Vedanta community used the old temple, up until 1959, when they moved to a much larger space. Today, it serves as a dormitory, lecture hall, and classrooms for the Vedanta community, and tours are not available to the public. Number 16. The Long Waterman House. Built in 1889 for John Long, an importer of exotic woods and the manufacturer of hardwood veneer, this Queen Anne Victorian is one of the grandest of the large mansions constructed in the Bankers Hill area of San Diego. It features intricate woodwork, a unique wraparound porch, a turret balcony, and the widow's watch giving you spectacular views of the bay. Due to the depression of the early 1890s, John Long sold the home only two years after its completion to Robert Whitney Waterman, the 17th governor of California. So for a short interim, this was the governor's mansion. Waterman died shortly after leaving office, and his heirs later sold the home to Fred Hart in 1897. It remained in the Hart family for decades and they kept it well preserved. The mansion still remains a private residence today, and is not open for tours. And last we have number 17. The Moors House. Built in 1894, this multi-style Victorian is named after the wealthy gold miner Frederick Mitchell Moors, who purchased the home in 1898. The three-story home mixes Queen Anne, with Richardsonian Romanesque, and Moorish elements, and is characterized by its asymmetrical detailing, and an onion-domed tower. Moors died two years after purchasing the home, and after a well-publicized battle over his wall, it passed on to his mother, then his siblings. Since then, the home has had several different looks, and has made appearances in multiple films and television shows, including the 1960s television series Mod Squad. The Moors house was recently restored to its previous prominence, and you can find this beautiful mansion in LA's South Bonnie Bray Historic District. It is currently a private residence, and not open for touring. And that's it for the 17 most jaw-dropping Victorian mansions in California. So which of these did you like the most? Which mansions are you looking forward to seeing? Are there any that we missed and you feel should have made this list? Anyway, if there's anything else you would like to mention about this topic, feel free to share it with us in the comments below. Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see each other next time.